Payments and transfers. I need a mo motion to uh, approve. So motion by Sam Small. Second, Second by Larry Cowan. Discussion. discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, got the minutes before you of the July the 9th meeting. Um, need a motion to approve. I'll make so, a motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Justin Cowan. Discussion, corrections, or additions? Larry. Put second Larry my Cowan. motion. Just, I'm sorry. I've got uh, just one little thing for discussion here. That is Larry Camp for the record. Go ahead. And we've uh, we've already talked about it, but uh, on uh, the very last, under committee reports and everything, there was uh, one section here about the, uh, the Fordsville Fire Department and Dundee Fire Department and the Fire Association. It says they're approved. But we didn't approve anything yet. No, we just no. we just discussed had discussion about it. So that word's going to be changed at a in discussion fact, or. Uh, in fact, I thought it was supposed to be on the agenda today. <clears throat> it's discussion and only. So write make a note in there, Miranda. Discussion only before I sign the minutes before we record it. Yeah, because we we withdrew first, sir. Yeah. yeah. Any any other discussion? That was it. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. The minutes are approved. You all have a copy of the treasurer's report. This is the annual settlement. And on the top, there's two books here. Um, this is my annual uh, review that kind of reviews the revenues and the departments for the fiscal year. On the first page, any of the revenues that fell below 90%, I highlighted and tried to explain. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've got to <coughs> read this now. Yeah. Yeah. You have to come and study it, and I'll be calling with some questions. <laughs> but, but, You're going to call us with questions. Yeah. It's bedtime reading there. Yeah, here's that, yeah. Okay, uh, of course, this annual settlement, is, of course, is subject to audit. But do I have a motion to acknowledge we got it? So but, second for acknowledge it. Motion by Sam, second by Joe. Uh, any discussion or question, further questions for Ann? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The Treasurer's Animal Settlement is uh, accepted, subject to audit. Uh, explain to us what we want to do on this uh, agreement with First United and tr Trust. Uh, that is set up, you know, the tax money and all the state money that we're getting. I have to try to get up to the state as quickly as I can because we're having to borrow the money on the last credit. This agreement uh, will set me up to where I can pay Scotty's after you all approve it on Tuesday. Tomorrow morning I can go in and pay Scotty's directly. And by that afternoon I can print off the confirmation and get everything sent to the state to get our money back for whatever part of that Otherwise it could be a t up to two week delay. Yeah. Yeah. Quicker the and better. Huh? Right now Scotty's is the only one. Uh, this is best. Do you need a motion to that yes. effect, Judge? Yes. 
A motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. The motion carries. Have paperwork further to sign on that. Just get it to me. Uh, I know this is going to be a contentious item here, but you have the uh, treasurer's June's. I mean the the clerk's June statement. I'll make a motion that we acknowledge. Motion for Jason. Second. Second for Joe. Any discussion or questions for Bess? Being none, I'm in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. For the record, I don't believe there's ever been any questions or discussion on the on her report. Of course, we know it's subject to audit. We're accepting that we we're uh, just acknowledging we got it. Um, the person, oh, you got them. The personnel items. Yeah, there's three of them, right? Yeah. Uh, first one I'm going to bring up. I thought there was copies. No. No. <laughs> pay them down. Um, we have three, three today. Uh, first is the park, Philip Wade. Maintenance one, <coughs> open position, uh, pay rate of twelve twenty-two an hour, begin uh, August the first, two thousand nineteen. Uh, I need a roll call vote on. Kim. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. What was the price? I'm sorry. Twelve twenty-two. Twelve twenty-two. Twelve twenty-two. And. Uh, Philip's been there with us a long time as a AmeriCorps worker, and I believe maybe as a seasonal before that. So he's been with us a long time. Yeah, he's horse principal. Next, we have Teresha McFarland. This is an open position. Our custodian at the courthouse quit. And this is a, to replace her, 903 an hour. It is a... Uh, uh, Part-time. Uh, it's a part-time job. I was looking for the hours she works, but 22 or less. And uh, I put her name up, so I need a roll call on her. Active. Effective uh, 728. Count. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Uh, this is a golf course for the uh, a helper uh, Angie Embry it's seasonal at 7.75 an hour um, and uh, I'll need a roll call and that is open position I need a roll call on her as well effective 8-1 effective 8-1 how many hours a week uh, no more than 22, but I can't tell you. If, no, wait a minute. No, I'm wrong about it. It could be up to... That, that one's going to vary. She's more so going to fill in because uh, we've got some kids going, going back to school. We've got one coming back in. So it's going to be a very... Count. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Small. Yes. Bluff. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Is that all we had? Three? I thought we had another one. They're all signed and laying here. When the meeting's over, you can pick them up, Renetta. Okay. Whew, this is a doozy. We've got the Sheriff's Quarterly Report, fee report. Uh, there again, it's subject to audit. We're just uh, acknowledging that he presented it and, and asking me questions we have about his report. Motion with Sam Small. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussions or questions for the sheriff? He's here. Uh, being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? That motion carries. And in that same line, you have his excess fee account uh, as amended as well in this packet. We need a separate motion for that. Motion by Larry Cam. Second by Sam Small. <coughs> Any discussion 
or questions? Uh, being none, uh, all in uh, favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed like that. That motion carries. Um, I'm going to tell you, Sheriff, I broke the ice with you with the school board. So you can have that conversation when you get a chance. They know you're coming. And what we're talking about... Okay. What we're talking about here is uh, the school board doesn't pay nearly as much for collecting the taxes to the sheriff as everybody else does. As all these other districts... The school board pays a lot less than that than everybody else does, so he's going to go try to talk to them on trying to <coughs> pay more like what everybody else does. Uh, uh, admin code amendment. Uh, I, I I have a copy here, but I'd like somebody on that committee to read this motion. David, you need to read it. Huh? I need to read it. I'll read the motion and see who wants to make it. You need to make a motion, if possible. No, I'm sorry. You're right. Thanks for keeping me in order here. Sorry. It's not June. I have to make the motion. That's right. Anybody can make it in June, but other than June, I have to make it. I move that we amend the Ohio County Administrative Code Ordinance 2019-6 to replace the word sick in reference to sick time to personal, reflecting the wordage as personal time, and to change a current policy referring, referencing sick time to personal time, maintaining all current procedures. I'll second. S second Joe Barnes. Discussion on this? And the reason for that is, that the reason for the change is because if it's all sick days, they just certainly don't have to give us any kind of advance notice of when they're going to take off. This allows the court to uh, authorize the road foreman that they have to give at least, what, two days, Joe, yeah. in advance of and when it, they're going to take off. And, and it kind of opens... Keeps our schedule a whole lot better out of trouble. And it kind of opens it up to where people... It, it makes it more... Some people feel you sick time. It's just sick time where it's actually personal time where they can schedule and go to a doctor's appointment. They can schedule and if a family member is having uh, some kind of medical procedure. Sure. And it kind of gives them a little bit more variety on what they can use that time for. Because, um, you know, you call in and you, or you use a sick day and everybody thinks you're, you're home sick, but it's actually, it should have been reflected as personal time. That way you can utilize it for, you know, but it also gives the road road, road department exactly ample time to all departments yeah, all departments all departments yeah and schedule schedule their work for that particular day if you call in sick but if you call in on a personal day you got to give some advance notice yeah and it, it, you know it'll it'll affect all departments you know where people call in uh, last minute and you know, it puts uh, people having to stay over uh, on overtime I believe in the jail and everything that we've run into where they've run into a lot of extra costs and we've had to budget a lot of extra money into the jail budget where it was overtime. Yeah. I don't think we've made any happy campers out of the road department, but whatever. Well, well uh, they, they may be camping too much. Need to be working. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, th this is, for fix the vote on this, but this is an ordinance, so it'll... Uh, We'll need to have a second reading. This is this will be our first reading. No, no this is just no, an amendment. It have, yeah. it's just amendment be, doesn't need a second reading. No, it's just an ordinance. You can just do it by motion, and then next June everything will get put in there and the amended. Okay, well maybe this is the first last time you have to hear about this then. Okay, uh, roll call. Count. Yes. Morphy. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Uh, next, it's the same, identical. There have been no change that I've submitted to y'all in uh, the last meeting on the flex funds. Uh, and uh, I have uh, discussed it with some of you since the last meeting. And I'm calling for a motion to submit this to Frankfurt for approval so we can get started on it. 
So hopefully we can get it done this season. Let's see. Somewhere. I have motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second by Larry Morphew. Discussion? Uh, David, after Ann has compiled some information and everything, you know, we've seen where we're at on percentages. And actually, there we're a little heavy in a few districts, you know, based on how uh, governor's discretionary and flex and, and money has been ponied out. But under circumstances, I'd like to go ahead and get it in to the state and get to working on these roads this year. But we've got a... Uh, uh, running spreadsheet of where we're at and you know just for a go I'd like to uh, try to rec reconcile that the next time around and get the get the percentages worked out where they're they're getting oh, the road formula. well get them, you know get them adjusted out where we're getting our percentages and we're not getting too much in one district I know sometimes that's kind of hard to do with the, the governor's discretionary money and flex we're trying to get a whole roads done but just we need to pay a little bit more attention to the spreadsheet if all possible we can get them close it's going to be don't hard. you think so on the with the, the rest goal. of the court yeah well we haven't got them close guys and as, as joe alluded to the spreadsheet shows it. Now let me let me just go through explain here the spreadsheet i've got in district one his percentage is 9.64 now this is the five the last five years compiled of eight million dollars that's been spent. The first district got better than three percent in his district. The second district got uh, six, seven, eight, nine more than three percent in his district. The third got uh, about three percent more in his district. The fourth district got three percent less, and the fifth district uh, got about uh, it was equal. Now, my argument or my debate on this is going to be that 3% three, 3 don't sound like very much. They say, well, what's the county complaining about? Well, 3% of $100,000 is $3,000 don't amount to nothing. But when you take $8 million in the last five years that's been spent on county roads, that's $240,000 that, that the 4th District's behind the 8th ball. I don't appreciate it. Every year we've got to go through this same discussion year after year after year. Now if you guys will look at that other sheet we got, now this is for this year, I'm $40,000, $45,000 behind the eight ball. And I, I, I just quite frankly, and I know you guys, I can understand y'all not having a complaint because you guys has been in the, in the uh, ahead of the eight ball. I'm behind it. And, and, and Joe, I would uh, uh, agree to what you say that if we're going to uh, adjust it next year, that'll be fine and dandy. But we had this discussion two weeks ago, and David, the judge, has decided that we don't need to make any changes in it. So when do we make the changes? Do, does the judge tell me next year we're going to make the changes and we're going to bring it up $250,000 that I'm behind? Uh, if you'll explain that to me, Judge, uh, I'll let you debate this issue. Well, I would love to have a road plan where we did not that we looked at the needs for the county as a whole. That's what I'd love to do. Okay, uh, could, you explain but, that? could you explain that to me then? What we, the needs, that the needs in the 4th District yeah. is not as, as much as no. the needs in the 5th, which got this year, got the... Uh, no, I'm saying that what we do, we'd have this discussion, our argument or whatever, d debate one time, and that would take care of it for all time. I mean, we'd have uh, for a long time, really long term. We have this discussion, still working judge, it every year. Every, we have this discussion every year, year know, after year. That's what I'm saying. And we have it year once year after behind. year, and it's still the same thing. And and uh, you guys can vote on tonight, and I feel rest assured that it's going to pass, but I, I can't, in good conscience, I'm not going to vote for it. I can't vote for it because I, I represent a district and we're $240,000 behind. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to support something like this. Uh, uh, Beaver Dam, when you take 3% and you take it out of $8 million, you can see what 7% of them, uh, the second district got as compared to the fourth. And it's totally, totally unfair. And I'm, I'm very disgusted with it. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was, you know, if it was just this year and say, well, we'll get together next year and we'll make it all fine and dandy. That'd be fine. I could live with that. But this is year after year after year. And I'm just, I'm really disgusted. Well, I'm forty some thousand dollars behind too, 
and uh, I think that the, the road, the district that's got the most roads should get the most money. I mean, that's just... Well, 3%, as, as I said earlier, 3% of $100,000 is $3,000. Nobody thinks nothing about that. But this is a running tally of the last five years, which we've spent $8 million, and 3% of $8 million, 3H is 24, $240,000. Now that's uh, five mile, four or five miles of blacktop that the 4th District's been shysted out of. And I, and I, I just, I just uh, uh, don't mean to get too excited here, but I'm trying to make my point. Mm -hmm. Which I want. To, I feel the same way. I, I think that. The, well, which means you've got the most roads, and I don't want no more than my share. But I do want my share of the road money because we have the worst roads. Worst roads. Uh, we can look at it overall, but uh, when you have something like this flex, it's meant to try to get some bigger projects done, and we didn't get all that many bigger ones done, but we did one. And uh, without looking at it this way, and looking at it over a period of years, we, we'll never get it, any of the long roads done in the well, small district. David, the only thing, you know, I'd like to go ahead and get it submitted this year and get it going because it's already late in the year and we're going to get to where we're not going to get it done this year. But, you know, I'm 311000 five, $583 short based on the road formula. So, you know, I'd... I'd really like to have it where the next the next governor's discretionary money that we look at is uh is catching me and Cal up, and plus next year we we really need to be well, looking at the, the road. But not as much, right? I'm behind too. But we need to, you know and we need to consider all this when we do the flex funds next year. Now I don't know, you know, if we need to well to agree on something tonight on that, but well we do need to try to. Get we'll, this trewed up so we'll, it's. We'll try. We'll, uh, we're going to probably have about the same amount next year. So, are there more governor discretionary funds coming in since there's an election year? Th there's probably not this calendar year, but very, very good chance there will be early in the following calendar year. And, I, and I'll be, I'll be fine with Larry and. And so uh, and I think that's okay. Uh, I'm behind I don't think this uh, this what I said is dependent <laughs> on the election necessarily. I think that uh, I think we're just uh, have the right network to get it either way. You know, and, and I, I, I'm not I'm not I know what they're complaining. I'm not, but I will say I'm one of the mine's beefed up because of Davis Road and Stanley Road, and that really wasn't because nobody used their FEMA money, which was emergency money, and that's basically money that I called and said, hey, they're using our road as their way, so it was kind of a trade-off money. It was added into my totals, but FEMA money wasn't added into anybody else's totals, so that does kind of offset it a little bit there. I think... It's probably my old meal one, FEMA money. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, so that, that does make my numbers look a little bit more than they should be. All right. Let's go ahead and vote. Miranda. Yeah. No. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bula. Yes. Barnes. Yes, under consideration that we're going to, we are going to try to true these up because, I mean, you know, three hundred eleven thousand. What was you short count? Two forty. Two forty. You know, that's. You know, there's a couple of big roads in, in my district that sure. need to be done. I'm sure there's some in counties that need to be submitted as governor's discretionary, and if not approved, because we don't get governor's discretionary, we need to move them to the flex funds next year. Okay. Okay. Can we have some kind of? Yes. We, could we agree on that? Joe, I couldn't yeah, agree we'll more, but I guarantee you, and I'll bet you $100 to one, we'll be here sitting here next year, maybe not in Fordsville, but we'll be sitting here going through this same discussion next year that the judge has picked out certain roads that he wants done, and the fourth will not get $240,000. You can write that down. Yeah. Well, uh, each of you give me two things in the next few months, next three or four months. One, to submit for governor's discretionary funds. Do that right away. Your number one priority road. Give me that. And then also, you about your, what your percentage is and try to figure out what your most important project is that would take that in a road or two. I'm not talking about the percentages now. I'm talking about $240,000 of them behind the eight ball, Judge. Well, the... the I know, I know it, doesn't, it doesn't mean as much to you, 
but it does to me because I represent a district that's got 200 miles of county roads in it. Well, I want everyone. And what do I need to tell the, tell my constituents? I said, well, you're just not as important as Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam has got all the roads blacktop, and even if they take one in, that's the first one that gets blacktop in before. And I know this to be a fact, and I know that Beaver Dam has had roads that's been resurfaced. And 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 here I'm sitting here. I'm not going to beg for anything. I'm going to make my point. I'm going to make it across, and and yeah. it's what's deserving of the fourth district. And that's the reason we had court meetings so we could discuss it. Uh, it's I, been discussed. I tell you what, I do. I do understand, and we will try. But I do need all of you to give me those two things. Your number one priority for governor's discretionary fund, and your and something that would fit your road formula that would be one project or two at the most. All right, and all of you do have long. I've got, I've it. got some picked out, so good. We should be able to get this screwed up. Yeah, I'm going to be filing that paperwork tomorrow. Okay, to okay. Make sure everybody's good. Yeah. Um, yes. Hey, did you change that? Yes, yeah, I said yes. I know. I bet House heard. bill money. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's here's the thing on flex fund and governor's discretionary funds. You've got to do it exactly the way you submit it. On this House bill, last year we gave them stuff with our totals in it, a little bit more than our totals, and, and then you at your district, and you did get to use your formula there, and done what you wanted to do until your money ran out, <coughs> whether it fit exactly the way it says on the list or not. But we had to have something to turn in. They go there. Here's yours. All right. I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you and I'm putting my little part of it on do railroad it. bed in your district I wait and, uh, year, and uh, Schultztown in his district and uh, uh, Sherwood Drive in your district oh. and Country Club in Sam's district. Yeah. I haven't decided in second district yet. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, gentlemen. What do you mean you haven't decided? What are you talking about in the second district? Remember, we talked about today. Oh, oh here, my, my little dab of uh, house yeah. bill money goes in the second district. I haven't got the road names yet. I've got everybody else's. Uh, okay. And this is this is your percentage of it, right? That I'm talking about now. Yeah. Yes, it is. Of course, I won't do that whole road. If we don't come up the rest of it, we'll see whether we can carry it over or I can start on do one end. We'll see how yeah, that works out. The road you were talking about ain't on It's on flex. Oh, okay. See, uh, 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 Key Town's on flex. Oh, okay. okay. Well, you, you said sure. What do you mean? No, Sherwood's on my, uh, my percentage of the house bill, my. Oh, I got you. Okay. Gotcha. Judge, I've got one other thing I need. Have we closed the meeting yet? No, I didn't. About two months ago, I entertained a motion on the court. This is right after uh, spring started. And the motion said and alluded to that the pothole patcher be utilized every day, that it wasn't raining, permissible, and uh, and to be kept account of, and make a complete circle of the county where all the potholes have been patched, and we were supposed to get a monthly reading back from the road department, and uh, and I've got four calls today on potholes, and I, I would like for you to explain to me, you're of the road department, explain to me why that we wasn't given any readout every month like we were prompt uh, that the motion alluded to and it was a six to nothing vote and i'm getting calls on potholes and, and they're not potholes that just developed they were potholes and and it gets back to what you said and i agree with you 100 percent. we need a plan and i thought that was a plan to get the potholes fixed make a complete round get them all fixed uh then we won't be getting complaints yeah. from a constituent uh we're making an effort i know where they're at i can tell the People yeah. in my district, when they're going to be there, when they're going to be fixed, and yeah. but yet we haven't got. Uh, ev evidently, as far as I know, none of that's been done. We've got no report back from the road department for the month, like the motion alluded to, and uh, I would like to see you follow up on that and 
Explain uh, to the court we'll, at the next meeting why it we'll have it a, hadn't uh, been done. We'll have a report. Now, as far as getting the potholes patched, they are working every day, and I think that was what the gist of it was. No, the gist of it was to start at one end of the county, mm -hmm. and if you want me to get a motion, I'll get with Beth, and we'll get the motion that starts one end of the county, and I told you then I didn't have a bit of problem wherever you started, but mm -hmm. make a complete circle in the county, get them all done, and when they're all done, but every month, have a detailed what roads have been uh, been potho patched, what is not, where we're at, and I haven't got any of that information whatsoever. We will have the uh, road supervisor and the assistant supervisor at the next rock. meeting to make okay. that report. Oh, okay. Uh, this court meeting, fiscal court meeting, is adjourned. And now, since we're done with the special call meeting, however, we begin like a town hall community meeting. We'd like to hear from the folks from the community that came, and uh, that's what we're floor is open for now, so we can hear from you guys. Mr. Chris. Judge, first off, I want to thank you all for coming up and making the floors real part of the Ohio County, and we feel like we should be, yeah. and it feels more comfortable when we see you all everybody here. Uh, but I have a question for Ms. Bess. Uh, it appears we've lost our our office here. She's here to answer that. No, it was going to be shut down because of the budget. And then we worked together to open it. And what happened was, I notified Frankfurt that it was shut down. Then when it reopened, I notified them that it wasn't. The gentleman that I had been talking to got sick at emergency surgery. He did not get the word to Frankfurt. They took out all the internet. Now, I've got to hear an uh, email today. Hopefully Friday is going to set me up with something different because it's going to take 90 to 120 days to get back what I have. So hopefully Friday, what they call COT, they're going to ship it from Frankfurt to the Ultra office. Hopefully they'll get with me and I'll meet them up here and we'll open Tuesday. Now don't hold me to that. Watch for my sign. But that's what they told me. <coughs> it all got crossed just because I generally got sick and they didn't get the right word to the other guy. So, I apologize, but I did post signs so people would know. The plan is to open Tuesday then. Well, now that's, you know, I'm going to tell you, Frank, we don't always, yeah, you know, no say happens what's going to happen, right? But that's what I've got right here today, and he just won't go at 3 minutes and said, we'll do it. I'm going to be sure to contact me so I can meet him. So, thank you, but I'm going to make this too. And uh, I will say, uh, I will say, I'm honored that uh, Mr. Christ is here today. In case somebody don't know who he is, he owns Dunaway Timber Company, who is a very large employer for the county, and uh, does a lot of good things uh, for the, for the community. And we're really proud that you came. And very good for the clerk's office. Yeah. A lot of renewal. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a heck of an economic impact in this community. Absolutely. I'd like to also introduce a couple of Fordville board members that are here tonight. Richard and Jim, they serve on the council. Yeah, really proud to be here. And uh, we'll make a thing, too, that we really want to work with the city governments because... Uh, that's important and we do have interlocal agreements with the ever city in the county all six of them and uh, we very much want to work with Fordsville as as team on some things that y'all your vision uh, do we do we have any support at all for some type of i'm talking about moderate uh some type of presumption of ordinance for nuisance properties in the county uh, we're in the month of September uh, our litter abatement people our, our local and the Frankfurt is bringing back the plan to the fiscal court uh, 
It's similar to ones that we have not got passed several times trying it. However, the city could pass one to take care of things inside the city limits, a nuisance ordinance. Enforcement's a little difficult. We have the city of Centertown has a nuisance ordinance and the city of Rockport has one. Centertown has a police department and that makes it a lot easier that they are having better luck enforcing theirs than the uh, than Rockport is. So uh, I would suggest the city pass one and then come up with a mechanism to enforce it. Maybe the sheriff would work with you or maybe you could have a code enforcement person. But if you want to show up at the September meeting, it's going to be discussed at fiscal court. I'm not talking about anything crazy like Davis County, but... We well, we, we need I'm, I'm one that feels like it's something needs to be needed. I mean, we you have nice homes out in the community and stuff, and I don't want it crazy either, but I want somebody's property to be protected from, you know, property values and stuff I've, like that. I've got, a, I've got a residence, and she's living right next to a trailer park, and there's trash everywhere, and I went to the health department, and, and can't get anything out of them. We are going to work on some more and there's some cities your size roughly have mandatory trash pickup as well. I mean, if you don't have your own mechanism to pick it up like Beaverdam and Hartford does, they have their, they build into their uh, fees, their, their water bill and <coughs> sewer bill and things, and they, they have that built in to do it. Um, but, uh, and have, have pickup, but you, you could do that somehow, build it into your utilities to have a trash pickup. Or you could actually make a mandatory pickup where everybody has to have a vent, someone pick theirs up. Well, I, I'll just get my view out there as we go. I ain't for any ordinance unless it is only household trash or junk house trailers, period. That's the only thing I'll be for. We've had one that was presented to the court. We've looked at it several uh, times and it, it got... It had rubbish on it. Had, the wording is all... You know, Junk, but so I live out in the country. Rusted equipment. Nobody lives within 400 feet or 400 yards of me. I got a piece of machinery sitting out next to the road. Somebody drives by, said I got to move it. Understand that, yeah. So we have to be really careful on the wording. Yeah, he got into. I don't. With our administration we have now, I don't see the abuse of that. But next generation, the next administration, you don't know. So before I vote for one, I want to be very careful and take our time and get it right the first time. And that's my stand on it. Yeah, Joe, I, Joe and I are on a committee, and we what approached this twice, Joe. And, and it, it got into it's got, where it got so broad is uh, it, it got into language about property lines and nothing could be no junk equipment could be stored within 150 feet of your property line. Well, you know how every older farmer in the out here in the country, they might have an old disc that they use every other year or every three years, and it's a piece of equipment they use to, to do whatever they need to with, but at the same time to the neighbor, if they're not seeing eye to eye, all of a sudden it's the junk piece of equipment that I want moved, and you're out there squandering over something silly like that when you turn right around and someone might have that same disc in their yard somewhere else as a yard ornament yeah. you know yeah, I'm because it's antique I'm, I'm so the trash and right you know. and then the, the only other thing that we were that I, I, I am concerned with doing that on a countywide once you pass something like that a different agenda a different court comes in to play and you're dealing with different people it is very easy once the ordinance is out there or a zoning issue or whatever is out there it's very easy to make changes here and there and the next thing you're 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 kind of blown it out of the water yeah. you've added things here and there and it's not at all what it intended to be but we we looked at it really hard me and larry count and, and sam was involved in it and uh we we brought it to all the court members and so far we haven't got the language right that would that would keep it from getting too broad yeah one thing that's helped up here at Ford's is we've had the dumpster. We have it every month, and you, you can 
Thanks to guys like Charlie <coughs> Mack that goes out and picks this stuff up, the old couches, chairs, stoves, refrigerators, or whatever, and it ends up in the dumpster, and that's made somewhat an impact. But I know what you're talking about, Richard, about across the street here that, uh, yeah, something, uh, somewhere along the line, something will have to be done. But I do agree with David. I think it'll have to be done, as far as you guys are concerned, it will have to be a city ordinance that uh, protects the, the city itself from the trash and the litter or whatever. So. Yeah, and uh, if you might call the city halls of uh, uh, Rockport or and Centertown, they do have these in place. And like I said, I think it's been more effective in Centertown than Rockport, don't you? Yeah, and I, I, you know, I haven't heard any, you know, where it's gotten crazy, you know, um, people complaining about anything or, you know, you know, could be old cars and they'd be picking up my cars up our Fords live up there at home, so. Yeah. yeah. And of course. I mean, we just have some problems that really need to be Of course. Uh, like we always have our hands tied. Yeah. Of course, jump cars don't look bad to me. They're different people, it's a different thing. Uh, tr bags of trash that's getting almost the road looks bad you know, to me. I worry about houses that have cisterns that are open and the houses are abandoned. Yes. Things like that. Yeah, that's really easy to address in a nuisance ordinance. The, those abandoned situations are. But uh, anybody else in the community? Got anything, sure? If you got some com any comments for the community, but I'm proud of Fordsville. Fordsville's a beautiful community. We have solved our uh, vandalism case up here at the church, Patty Mill. Good. Mm -hmm. are they the are they the two I mean they they didn't look like they're from this world did they no uh, uh, but I see we know they're homeless uh, something of that nature maybe an address in yeah. Evansville Litchfield maybe yeah. they've been arrested uh, in Davis County the day before they done the vandalism and the day after they were arrested in Grayson County so. yeah well, you know, Tracy, there's nothing wrong with being homeless, but there is something no, wrong with going in destroying no, church we, property. We don't, we don't fault them for being homeless. Right. We fault them for turning that church up. That's right. Exactly. Yes. 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 But, uh, uh, two or four days ago, five, something like that, Tracy, when it happened. Yeah, picture yeah, last week. And you know what? That's actually rare, more rare in Fortsville than it is other parts of the county, like Beaver Dam or... I think it's going to journey through and just stop there. To you, you know, I'm no psychiatrist by any means, but you really got to have a mental problem to go into church and start tearing that stuff. You know what? Right. And I should know. Is that what you're saying, Jim? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I have no desire to tear up anything if anybody's anywhere. But I would be downright scared to do that in the church. Uh, That's true. Yeah. If uh, no one else has anything else, we will we will call the uh, town hall meeting adjourned as well. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Yeah.